Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. We're TIG welding aluminum today, doing some lap joints, and I'm going to do one with argon and one with the argon helium mix. Not a premixed gas, or I don't have a, a gas mixer either. Those are pretty expensive. I've just got a simple Y setup. We'll talk about that a little bit. But you'll see a big difference in the two joints. Run both at 100 amps, same machine, not changing anything else. Let's do it. Now, while I have several TIG inverters with all the bells and whistles, there's a lot to be said for just a simple, basic welder like this. See how easy it is just to swap it over for welding aluminum, and you set the amperage and you go. Now, in this particular shot, I am using a TIG inverter with a number 8 gas lens cup. I do that a lot for steel. I use a number 8 or a number 7, and I'm playing around with pulse settings. That's something you can do with inverters. This is one pulse per second, and with that big 8 gas lens cup, I get nice color on that thing. But... Today, just using this basic TIG 175 unit, welding some aluminum. 11 gauge, roughly eighth inch thick, 60-61. Getting a tack on the end, and for the other end, instead of coming in at this kind of an angle, that does work, but sometimes it pulls air in and kind of contaminates the tack. You can see it happen right away, it doesn't puddle cleanly. I found it helps to come in at that kind of an angle. I'm using a number five gas lens set up here with only 10 CFH pure argon and coming in from this angle like this just have to hold the torch a little bit differently generally works better for me on the edge when I'm using a small cup like a number five that's even more important because you just don't have that big a gas envelope so if you're welding over an edge it's gonna split the argon envelope and it's gonna cause problems now, like I said, I'm using 100 amps, full pedal, and it's very slow go, very slow travel speed, and it's just barely hot enough to weld this particular material. You can see it just, it's a little reluctant, the puddle is a little bit reluctant to move forward. It's kind of getting down in there into the root of the joint, but you kind of wonder if it is completely. Not going badly at all, welding fairly cleanly going to be a decent looking weld it's just really slow and that's 100 amps and this is just for the purposes of showing you the difference in using pure argon at 100 amps and mixing a little helium in at 100 amps here's another shot you can see it's just a very slow travel speed and that's not always a problem except that by doing this whole joint and it taking a whole minute and 40 seconds to make eight inches of weld that makes for a lot of heat input. The formula for heat input is like this, and we won't go into this very deeply, but it's volt times amps divided by travel speed. So voltage and amperage increase heat input. Travel speed, increased travel speed, lowers it. Slow travel speed increases heat input. All right, that was at 100 amps, pure argon. Let's leave the machine alone, and now we'll add a little helium into the situation. Now there's a bit of a helium shortage going on. It's difficult to get as opposed to say 10 years ago and it's more expensive but I can still get it in the Atlanta area here. It just costs a little bit more than it used to and uh, I don't use that much of it so it's still very much worth it to me to keep a bottle on hand. There's the Y setup that I'm using. It's a Western 411Y with valves and also got check valves in, the, in line there. And I'm just barely floating the balls. Each, each ball to about five CFH and that is enough with that number five cup. I like using a number five cup for a lot of aluminum jobs and really there's there's no reason to go bigger unless you need to unless you're losing gas coverage over a corner or an edge or something like that. So again this one is uh, a little bit of helium mixed in and right away you'll notice it puddles immediately and I'm off to the races a lot quicker than with pure argon. I think that's pretty obvious looking at that shot right there. It just increases travel speed by at least 50%. And it just makes, actually it's a nice clean puddle, makes things go better. Now, could I use, just use more amperage and, and uh, use pure argon? Sure, sure I could, but I'm just trying to show the difference. And when you get on up around, you know, 250 amps, uh, it still puddles a lot quicker. And sometimes you maybe only have a 200 or 250 amp machine and you just need a little extra. Otherwise things will go really slow. And a cylinder of helium is a lot cheaper way to go than selling your machine and upgrading to another one. 
Nice clean puddle. All right, this particular joint took 57 seconds to do as opposed to a minute 40. It welded cleaner, it welded faster, it looks better. Now the point here is if you have a 200 amp inverter and you're welding quarter inch, you're going to be on the borderline of not being hot enough and adding helium could get you over the hump, just like the difference in, in these welds with pure argon and an argon helium mix. So you can see I, already, I welded the other joint too and actually penetrated all the way through because it was still a little bit warm when I fired up on that one. So again, review here, that was 100 amps, 10 CFH of pure argon on the first joint, and that looked like this. It welded fine, but it was kind of a slow go. Which, slow is not always a problem if you're welding a small repair or two or three parts, but if you're welding a thousand parts, then not being able to pick up your travel speed can be a big issue. Now, let's mix helium in, and we get an arc that looks like this without changing anything. You know, at least, at least uh, one and a half times the travel speed. Much faster, a nice clean puddle, things just going a lot better. And the way I did that was a, a 411 Western Y like this with valves. A simpler way to just try this out might be just a plain Y with hose clamps. I'm, I'm showing you shots of the part numbers and everything in case you're interested in Googling that on Amazon or eBay and looking it up. There's the hose clamps that I used. You can get those at any AutoZone or Home Depot or anything like that. And I used uh, three pieces of hose, two pieces 18 inches long, one piece about three feet long, and you might even want to double clamp them. <laughs> All right, quick story here for you before I let you go. Several years ago, I was moonlighting and I'd stop by this job shop every day after work to TIG weld aluminum. Well, I talked the guy into setting up a, a, a scenario just like you saw me weld with today, argon and helium wide together. And uh, when, when I would stop by there and he'd be out of helium, I would just tell him, hey man, get some helium, I'll see you next time. It's not worth it for you to pay me what you're paying me per hour for me to weld with argon instead of the argon helium mix. It was that much quicker. Well, that's about it for this week. I didn't have a chance to slice and dice, polish and etch and show you the, the bead nugget profiles of these welds. I'll try to follow up in just a day or two with a part two of this video and polish and etch and show you and do a little preview of this so you can see right back to back the arc and the puddle and then the result. All right, see you next time.